Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Drugs Milan Unboxing. Uh, we've got big time boxing returning to South Africa. We've got a couple of South African title fights going, and two of them uh, are happening Saturday night on Super Sport on the Golden Glove Show at Emperor's Palace. And I'll be uh, uh, lucky enough to be one of a few ringside for that, covering that fight. Uh, but in the main event, we're going to we're going to see a co-main event of two South African title fights. In the one we've got, what um, I think is one of South Africa's top up-and-coming prospects, um, undefeated uh, Shavante Koopman. He's taking on the South African champion, challenging for the national title. He's taking on Simon Gladler. Both these guys have got good knockout ratios. Uh, Gladler has only lost one fight. And uh, that was unfortunately his last fight, December last year, where he was knocked out in the first round by Rock Knapp, uh, the South African title, not being on the line for that. So uh, uh, that is, that's not good momentum for Simon Gladler. But in that fight, we did see that Gladler can punch. He's got a high knockout ratio. And uh, before Rock knocked him out, he, he had Rock eating one or two very hard right hands there. So Gladler is dangerous. Maybe he lacks a little finesse, but he's a dangerous puncher. And Shavante Kwipman likes to stand and trade, and he'll take a few. In his last fight, he was involved in an absolute war against uh, Jacques Mouvout from uh, the DRC. It was a great fight, but he came through it. He showed very good poise, and he won it on points. Now they've got to go 12 rounds, so uh, it's a different kettle of fish. Gladla has been 10 before. Shavante Kwipman has never been beyond 6. Um... Overall, I think this is a fight that can produce fireworks. Kwipman has to tighten up his defense. Don't give Simon Dada the punches chance that he's sure to have. And how will Dada handle uh, the ghost of his last knockout loss to uh, uh, Rock Knapp? Because it was one of his devastating knockouts. So uh, I think Simon Dada here yeah, has got a punches chance. But so far, Shavante Kwipman has, has, has taken shots well. I think he's technically just a little bit tighter and better uh, than Simon Dada. So um, I, I, I don't think uh, that Shavante Kwipman may necessarily get the job done as quickly as Rock Knapp, but I think he's going to get it done. And I think he's going to stop Simon Gladla, uh, barring a haymaker from Gladla. But I'll go with, with, with Shavante Kwipman to win that encounter on a stoppage within the first five rounds or so. The other South African title fight is another undefeated fighter. Uh, challenging for the SA title, but both challenges because it's a vacant title, the vacant SA super middleweight title, but vacated by Rowan Campbell. And uh, that's Cohen Ray, undefeated, taking on Frank R Rodriguez, who's had a couple of losses. Rodriguez is from Alan Tawil sta Stable, he's moved down to super middleweight. He's unsuccessfully challenged here in Cape Town for the South African light heavyweight title against uh, Nicholas Radley. And uh, they, he gave a good account of himself, but he got uh, uh, knocked out in the 11th round. Um, now he's taking taking on Cohen Ray. Now Ray has had a, had a few problems outside the ring, took a year off. He looked very good when he returned last year, but he didn't have much in front of him in terms of opponent. So it's easy for him to look good. Now Frank Rod uh, uh, Cohen Ray is a bit of a boxer puncher, does a bit of everything. He's got a nice jab. Uh, and then Frank Rodriguez... Uh, he's a come forward kind of guy. He likes to slug. His nickname is Tank. He's got a good hook. He's had some good wins. Most notably is Michael Markrambe that got him a Gauteng title, light heavyweight. So he really comes to comes to fight and he's going to give it a go, as they say in England. Uh, Cohen Ray to me is a bit more a bit a more talented, polished fighter. Although it's easy of guys uh, with only had, only had six fights. You know, Cohen is six and zero with four knockouts. Uh, it's it's hard hard to say what will happen when the pressure is really on and Frank Rodriguez is going to put the pressure on him. So we'll see what hap what happens. And we'll also have to see is Frank Rodriguez stronger at the weight or is he uh, pulling too much weight. He, he looks kind of a stout kid to me, so I think he might do better at super middleweight. Uh, <coughs> but I'm going to go for Cohen Ray uh, in this one. I think, uh, I think he, uh, late stoppage or points. And then we've got the return of Ricardo Malajica. Um, he's facing a late substitute. He was going to fight Siko uh, Motole, and uh, that didn't work out. So he's facing a guy with, with a couple of losses. I think that's just to get his, to get his feet wet again after, his, after his first defeat against Sabello and Gavignana. 
So I'm not going to talk much about that. I think that's a foregone conclusion. But then there's a heavyweight fight on the undercard. And we're all like the big boys. We've got Paul Allen, Nieber, the dragon. Uh, Alan Tawil's boy, 5-0 and oh, with four knockouts. Now, I, I saw him alive the last time. Now, he became the South African t uh, champion uh, with, I think it was something like five amateur fights, all one in the first round and first round knockouts. And uh, that speaks something towards the, the, the poor quality of the South African heavyweight division at the moment in the amateurs. But uh, he came into, into professional boxing, looked very wild, swinging and all of that. And people joked about him. But uh, Alan Tawil and Paul Allen, they've worked hard at it. And his last fight in a, within a round against a guy that was making his pro debut, but it was a properly sized guy in, in, in uh, uh, Jean-Pierre Steenkamp. And he came out of a corner and he nailed Paul Allen Nieber with a big left hook. And Nieber just shook it off and he threw, threw a jab, something that was always missing, pop. And then eventually he, he, he laid uh, 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 Steenkamp out in the first round. So Paul Allen Nieber's got two things that I like. He, of course, he's got a chin, he can take one. And number two, he can punch. And he's almost seven foot tall. So if you have a guy that size and you get, get him to develop a killer jab, and maybe just keep his hands up. I would always, I always look at Bill Allen Nieber and I think George Foreman in his 40s, that kind of style is what I would pattern him after if I was Alan Tawil, far be it for, for me to tell him what to do. Uh, but anyway, we like having these discussions. But he's got a serious test. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a six rounder. Uh, I would have liked it if it was more rounds. That would have made it interesting. He's taking on Josh Pretorius. Now, Josh has, has been around on the heavyweight scene in South Africa. Um, he, he's got two losses to uh, Tian Fuck. He, his last fight, he lost on points to Tian Fuck. Uh, they in Cape Town for the South African heavyweight title. And he's, 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 he's only lost to good good guys. You know, Chris Thompson very early in his career. Flo Simba, the only guy who stopped him. Also, when Josh was very raw. Um, and, and then against Justice Saliga, he could put him down, but he just couldn't get over the nod. And he's a sort of a, a steady come forward sort of fighter that can also box a little bit. But uh, he, he's got good technique. If Volgalem Nieber is going to go in and just swing wildly for the rafters like he did in his next two previous fight, his fights before that, then Josh Pretorius is the kind of guy who's going to upend him and teach him a boxing lesson. Because Pretorius can fight. He's not a top-class heavyweight, but he can fight. And if Nieber reverts back to that, he will be in trouble. But if he keeps improving, if he keeps his jab going, especially that could be the key here, because against Tian Fuck, I saw that Josh has a great trouble with these tall guys closing the distance. Tian is more of a mover, and uh, he, in his last fight, he developed a really quick long jab, and Josh had a lot of trouble with that. You know, and uh, Nieber is not a mover, he stands there, but he's a much taller, bigger guy than Josh is. And if Nieber uses his jab, uh, I think Josh is going to have a little bit of trouble. If I was Josh Pretorius, uh, what I would do is I would I would look at Ivana Holyfield fighting Nikolai Valuev uh, because that's a way Holyfield almost beat him, beat him on many people's mind, but not the judges. That's a way you can fight a guy like Wilhelm Nieber when you're Josh Pretorius. He's not Mike Tyson that's going to go in like that with that quick, those quick movements, but he can hit, turn, and walk away. Hit, turn, walk away, make Nieber run out of gas. So that could work for Josh Pretorius. What he's got a guard against, he's going to find Nieber easy to eat when he gets in close. And then people eat Nieber and think, ah, oh, this is easy. And they stand in the pocket and trade before you know it, you're looking up at the lights. So those are the X factors. This is a good step up test for Wilhelm Nieber. Who do I think is going to win? I think Alan Tawil is going to continue to improve Wilhelm Nieber. I think this will be the fight that might steal the show on the card. I think Josh is going to give it a good go. I think he's going to nail over Adam Nieber a couple of times. But in the end, uh, my gut feel is that for Adam Nieber, the power is for real. If he uses it in a calculated way, I think uh, Josh is going to run into something. And Boy uh, uh, Adam is going to stop him within that six rounds. Uh, if, if not, uh, uh, Josh could possibly win this on points. You never know. But my gut feel tells me never he, he's dedicated to the youngster. He's lost a lot of weight. He's he's improving all the time. He's going to be just too big and too strong uh, for for Josh in the end. So I'm rolling there with for Alan Nieber. But uh, watch the fights on Super Sport on Saturday night. Please give my channel a like and a subscribe. 
And until we see each other again, please remember to keep those gloves up.